What's going on guys? Nick from Amstead Digital, also known as Ghost 4 h Delta X-Ray. In this video, I want to show you guys vertex painting and simple grass winds. A lot of videos out there on YouTube showing simple grass winds, but they're only giving you half the equation. I'm going to give you the other half. That's why I'm better. I'm Fethel. But anyway, create your two planes. Go ahead and make, they should already be UV unwrapped. If not, UV unwrap them. Um, next thing you want to do, I'm going to tab over. Go ahead, tab over. So you want to, I subdivide it up to eight times. Now, I would recommend a minimum of four subdivisions just because when you start vertex painting it, you're going to want like zero affected, 25% effective, 50, 75, and 100% effective affected. And you're going to go all the way up the mesh doing that. So let me show you the vertex paint. So basically what the vertex paint is, is mad, think of it in a way of weight painting. So when you weight paint, blue is not, not really affected and red is highly affected. The same thing with vertex painting where black is not very affected, not affected much, and white is fully affected. So once you subdivided and you've weight painted this, and like I said, I would go up like, you know, zero to 25%, 50%, uh, 75 and 100, just like here, 0% affected, 25 up here would be, uh, you know, 0, 25, 50, 75, and up here would be 100. Once you guys have that done, then we're going to file, export, FBX, and, you know, go ahead and name it what you're going to name it. And make sure in geometry, in order to not get smoothing group errors, Change this, the smoothing, which will be norm, on normals only. Change it to faces and export. Once you got that done, we're ready to step into the Unreal Engine. All right, so now we're in the Unreal Engine here. So let's go ahead and import our meshes. Open. And we want to make sure none of these are combined. And so very important, make sure the vertex color import option is on replace. If you used something other than white, like green or red, you'll need to make sure that you clicked override and select the affected color. I'm, I stuck to black and white. I don't know why you would want to use a different color, but some people are weird. Or maybe if you're coming from Maya, maybe it's a different color and that's just the, what you like. So anyway, replace and import. Second mesh would be the same thing. Make sure it's not combined meshes. If you have multiple meshes, replace and import. So now I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to do that. And let's go ahead and get this out of here. All right. So let's see which one's which. I don't know if you guys can tell which one's which, but the one on the right here is definitely vertex painted, where the one on the left is non-vertex painted. So one of the biggest reasons why you want to learn the vert how to do vertex painting in Blender, especially if you're going to be creating trees and you want leaves on your trees, you don't want the leaves, you know, you don't want the stem of the leaf, you know, moving around like this is doing right here. You want it to be more stationary and then the top of the leaf be more affected. And that's the main reason why we do vertex painting, especially for grass. You may be able to get away with it for grass, not vertex painting, but it does look better vertex painting it. Excuse the poor textures on this. I was just throwing something together and trying to make this quick for you guys. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the bush material here. So a simple grass wind. First thing we want to go ahead and do is get your, te get your uh, texture image and connect it into the base color. Next thing you'll want to do is select the material, uh, the material output node and you want to make sure blend mode is set to mask. I always do two-sided foliage and make sure you double you hi, or highlight. Make sure you check mark two-sided foliage. And what that's going to do is that's going to that's going to make the mess or the texture render on both sides of the plane rather than just one side. Okay? So once that is done, opacity and opacity mask should open up. You want to take your alpha and connect it into the opacity mask. You want to take RGBA alpha and connect it into the opacity. The next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and type in simple grass wind. So simple grass. Whoop. Oh, wow. I can't spell apparently. Simple grass wind. You would select it. Get that. So in this next part here, either you can hold one on not the number pad, but the one on the, on the keyboard, like the far left number one. And you could just left click and get your constants or you could type in constants. Plug your constants into wind intensity and wind weight. 
take the RGB, connect it into the additional WPO vector three, and then you wanna make a multiply. Now this step is very important. You gotta make sure you have a multiply because you need to connect a vertex color input data. You wanna connect the green to the alpha and then take that multiply and connect it into the world position offset. And I'll show you why this is so important. So let me disconnect that. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Once it hurries up and starts being slow. So once I disconnect it, you'll, you're gonna see here that the vertex painting that is done is completely ignored because it's not, if it even moves. Let me try this here. Try connecting that and just bypass that completely and see what happens. Pretty much if you don't have this input, this vertex color input data, it's not going to, um, it's not going to be moving. Oh, we need this. Oh, you bastard. Get out of here. Okay, so now we're moving. Now you can see that even though one is vertex painting and the other one isn't, it doesn't matter because it doesn't know that it needs to be using those vertex colors. So, I come over here, green into alpha, make sure the result for the simple grass one is into bravo, and connect it into the world position offset. We're going to go ahead and save it. Very important that you have it set up like this. So just, you know, just going over this one more time. Texture, texture image connected to the base color. Select the material output node. Blend mode needs to be to masked. Shading model needs to be to two-sided foliage. And check mark two-sided foliage, or well, two-sided, not two-sided foliage. And then when you do that, it should open up opacity mask and opacity. RGBA to opacity alpha to the opacity mask. And then you want to create a vertex color input data, which is just as simple as vertex. And then right here it says vertex color. Once you do that, it will pull that up. Type in simple grass one, get that in there. RGBA to additional PP, WPO vector three, two constants, one plugged in the wind intensity, one plugged in the wind weight. Plug the wind intent, or not wind intensity, uh, simple grass wind into Bravo, vertex color into alpha, and then connect that into Bravo, or oh my god, into Bravo, connect it in the world position offset. And then once you do that, then we will have this. And now it no longer ignores the vertex painting and it actually utilizes it. Like I said, very important method to know. It's just if you start making trees and you put leaves on there, the stems, everything's going to become, is going to become detached from the branches and you don't want that you want the branches to stay connected to the main root and then as you progress further out as it gets lighter and more heavy on the branch it would be become more affected the same thing here where it's nice and sturdy like a foundation and as we get up higher it becomes more flimsy and weak and moves guys i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you like the content so i know what videos to be making